Pterodactyl here, and you're probably tired of seeing these ads, but the problem isn't going away anytime soon. Every year, thousands of neglected old parts are melted down for scrap. And for what? These parts, they didn't do nothing to no one. It's not their fault the manufacturer discontinued their models, rendering these parts useless. But somewhere out there, someone still needs these parts. And that's where you come in. For $9.99, you can adopt a part and save it from being thrown away like a piece of trash or melted down for scrap. Here's some testimonials from some people just like you who adopted some parts. I don't even know what part this is or what this thing even fits. But knowing that I could save this little guy from the scrap hopper makes it all worthwhile. Come on, little buddy. Time for your walk. I got this cute little guy for $9.99, and he's my best friend. I just love this little cylinder head. Adopt yours today. $9.99? That's nothing. To save the life of an old part? Are you kidding me? It's a no-brainer, dude. Adopt today. You can make a big difference with your small contribution of only $9.99. Adopt your part today. <clears throat> Stupid old parts nobody wants. Nobody's buying them. Wasting my time. Ah! 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 You like throwing away defenseless new old stock parts, boy? Ah! Ah! How would you like if I threw you away like an old part, scumbag? Ah! Do something good. Adopt a part today. You'll receive an information card with your part's name on it and a random old part from my part shelf. You can save a part from going in the trash. Now there's your dinner. Pterodactyl here. Today's how-to video is gonna be on this here John Deere Z445 with the FS 730V Kawasaki engine. And the problem this one's having is right underneath this cover. Motor came in, had no power, was running on one cylinder, pulled the valve cover off, and this is what I found. Two bent push rods. And the problem is right here. Looks like the valve guide moved. See how the guide had moved out and it's restricting its travel. So when this thing can't move, the cam going around, the cam says, well, if you're not moving, I'm gonna keep going. And then something's gotta give and that thing is little Mr. Pushrod. He's the one that, that gave up. But it did it on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this cover off, take these bolts out, Take this screen off, pull this cover off, and we're gonna see what's underneath there. Maybe it's all packed up with grass and it overheated. Now on this Kawasaki cover, you don't have to take these cover screws all the way out. You just gotta loosen them up because this is on a slot, it's slotted. So if you get the bolt past this part, you just pull this off. So, here's why our Valves fail right there. Air cooled engine cannot cool. Can't cool if there's a bunch of crap packed up. Looks like Fluffy strikes again. Woo! Fluffy! Yeah! He's making me money. Now I need to take the intake manifold off, take off this cooling shroud and we gotta remove the exhaust. So 10 millimeter bolts over here to take this out. There's four of them. Now this lower manifold bolt in here is kinda tricky to get at. So I'm gonna use a universal and I'm just gonna loosen these bolts and I'm gonna try to get this head off 
And then the top one I gotta get with a ratchet wrench. And I think if I just loosen it, that'll give me enough room where I can slide the head off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this vent line. Get that out of my way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this stuff out of my way for now. Now I'm gonna take this cooling shroud off. They may have to use a universal joint. Probably should have used a set of a deep well. Probably should have used a shallow socket. Fortunately, they're not gonna they're not gonna warranty Fluffy's handiwork. Alright, that's our voltage regulator there. This thing's plastic, so I could probably just hold it out of the way. I'd like to take it off. See how hard it would be to take this thing off. And then this stupid thing came off. Be aware that this is on under that screen. Here's your voltage regulator. Pull them wires off. Looks like we got a ground wire here. I'll pull that off. Let's see if this will be out of our way then. So I removed this ground wire. It was 5 16 or 8 millimeter. And then they got all this stuff zip tied here. And then now you can get this off. So that was zip tied to here. These wires, three of them. The voltage regulator, or the uh, alternator wires, and these other two wires. They're all zip tied to that cover. So get that cover out of the way, it makes it easy. Now I gotta take the muffkin off. Now I'm going to pull this muffkin cover off, and if you notice, there was a big guard back here, but we took that off ahead of time. Get, oh, that thing's heavy. Now we got that off. Then you're going to need a 12 millimeter deep well to get at these muffkin manifold bolts, or nuts. Because the other one's back up underneath here and a deep well works good at the right length. So just go ahead and take the four nuts off. And then you can take the muffkin off. So now we're going to remove all the head bolts that hold the head on and they're 14 millimeter. In order to get to this one here, you see, it doesn't really get in there good. So we have to remove this. So that's 10 millimeter. And this has got a, a different way of setting the valves, which you'll see when I go to put it all back together. This valve adjustment is on a, like a camber, if you notice. See how it moves up and down? See how it's moving back and forth? It's on an eccentric. And that's how you set your backlash. But we'll cover all that when we put it all back together. First I gotta get this out. Come on out. So the first thing, you know, you remove the nut from the other side. I spun it backwards and I spun it forwards and then it came out. So it was a little a little stuck in there. But you can see, see this bolt? It's got like flat marks on it. Three different flat spots. And then it's got this spacer.
and the spacer's got a slot in it. So it's got a whole different way of adjusting your valve. So we don't want to lose that nut. And now we can get to this bolt, which is 12 millimeter. So we can take this out. Now I can get at that head bolt. So there's a head bolt there, there's one here. There's one here. There's one here. There's one over here. So I went ahead to make it quicker and hooked up a universal joint once I got them loose. Depending on what this engine's on, you might be able to get straight at them with an impact. Oh wow. That got curled back. That's the head gasket. That's from the that's from the push rod. The valves look okay. I've had some of these engines come in where these valves had snapped off. So I'm gonna look down in here. Everything else looks to be okay. Pull the other rocker arm off. Now with my valve removal tool, let's take this valve out, this exhaust valve. There it goes, there it goes. Sometimes you gotta tap on the top. I'll put a socket over the top of the, the valve before I put this tool on. Kind of tap it with a hammer because you know these keepers are on a taper and sometimes it gets stuck so sometimes I'll put a socket that's that size on there and give it a whack kind of pre pre dislodge it so you can see how high this guide is let me go ahead and pull the other side off. And I'll show you what I mean about dislodging that now that we're going to do that. So you can find a socket. That fits pretty good on there. And then you just give it a tap. See, it already started to pop them out. I might be able to do it by hand. No, nope. let's use the tool. Now and get those little little valve keepers out. Don't lose them. You know me, I'm gonna drop them on the ground. So look, look at the difference. See, here's your valve, your valve seal, which is on top of the, the guide. See where it's at. And look at where this is, way up here, because this doesn't move. Because it's only pressed in there. And it looks like it destroyed it too. That valve guide seal. Yeah. It's all, the rubber part's all gone. The seal part is missing. So I could probably drive that out of there. Again, probably use a socket. Oh, there's a little washer on there. Oh, that's on here. 
That's on the rocker arm. I'm gonna drive this thing out. All right, I went and got me a punch, a big punch, about the diameter of that guide. And I drove it out and lost it. There it is. Now it's covered in sawdust. So there's your guide. And of course I kind of ruined it, but I can clean that up. Now, on automotive heads, they cast the aluminum or the aluminum, they cast it around the guides. But in these small engines, they press them into the head. So I drove out the, the guide, and of course I kind of damaged it a little bit, but I cleaned it up. See, it's good, it's just a guide. All it's gonna do is guide the valve up and down. So you're probably thinking, well, how are you gonna fix that, Carol? What are you gonna do, put Loctite on there? Well, I could put Loctite on there, but chances are it's on the exhaust side going to get hot and then over time it's going to break down. So I drilled a little divot in there just so I could check to see how hard this guide is and it's not very hard. So that means I'm going to be able to drill a hole in the head and tap it. So I'm going to drill and tap 1024 and I'm going to use a 1024 set screw to hold this from moving. And you use a number 25 drill bit or 532nd is the closest fractional drill. So what I did is I put a center punch mark right there and I'm gonna drill and tap that first. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put the guide back in and set it to where I need it set it to the right height and then I should be able to see the guide through the hole that I drilled and tapped and then I'll take the drill and I'll drill a divot like I did here just my test divot I'll drill a divot into the guide and then I'll put the set screw in now I'll probably lock tight the set screw in so I'm gonna go ahead and drill and tap that hole. I got the hole drilled, and then I made up my tap socket on the end of my nut driver so I can get in there easy. Since it's only 1024, Try our set screw. Make sure it goes in. Oh yeah. All right. So now I got to drive the guide back in and set the height. Now on this guide, there's a little step on the bottom. So it went in like this. So if this happens to you, be aware that there's a little step in there. And the little step is in here. And the top is just round. I'll probably use a piece of brass so I don't egg shape this again and then I'll get my little scale so I can set the depth of 
Got my little scale. I'll go down a little more. All right, I got the depth all set, and I was going to drill it to mark it, but I thought, nah, I don't want to do that. It might might eat up my new threads in that soft aluminum. So I got a 5 30 seconds transfer punch. Now, you can buy these transfer punches pretty inexpensively. It's a good tool to have around. You can use them for all kinds of stuff. I think I got them at Harbor Freight. So I'm going to use a transfer punch. And I'm gonna mark where I wanna put that divot and then I'll just go ahead and pull this back out. Now if you want, you could always take a wizard wheel and cut some grooves in here and you could put Loctite on here for just, you know, like a just in case to hold it in there even tighter. So you know what, I think I'll do that too. So there's my, there's my center punch mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill that so the head of the, head of the set screw will sit in there. And then I'm gonna take my wizard wheel and I'm gonna cut some grooves in here and then I'm going to use some green Loctite. I know I said well you could use Loctite but then the Loctite will get hard, hot and then it will come out. Well I'm going to use green. Green is for like bushings and bearings and stuff and you know it won't hurt to use a little Loctite. So there's the divot. I started with a 764 drill bit and then I went up to 3 sixteenths. So we got a nice divot for the set screw to, to go into. And then I put a real thin blade on my wizard wheel. And now I'm gonna cut some grooves in there. As you can see, I grooved it up a little bit and the grooves are for the Loctite to go into. It's for that Loctite to grab hold to. And I got the green, which is retaining compound. The green is real good. If you don't have any green, you could use red. But you said not to use Loctite, Terrell, a few minutes ago. Now you're using Loctite. Don't listen to what I said. Listen to what I say, not what I said. Does that make any sense? Listen to what I say, not what I said. And then... Get your divot lined up. And there it is. There's my little divot. I'll put some of that green. Oh, here's some. Here's some green. Here's some green that came off with a guide. Put some green on this ratch here. Here's the green. Oh. And this will be cheaper than buying another head. This is going to save the guy some money. Oh, man, that's nice. Get it nice and tight. All right. Now, I gotta order the gaskets. I don't have any of the gaskets. I'm gonna get a new valve cover gasket, new intake manifold gasket, head gasket, exhaust gaskets, since I took the muffkin off. And then we can reassemble. Oh, I'll do a valve job. I'll clean up the valves on the wire wheel. Clean up your valves. 
since this one's only got 177 hours on it, I shouldn't have to reface them. I'll just lap them back in. But if your engine has more wear on it, look for little grooves in the face of the valve if there is from the from the seat. Maybe you can take them to an auto shop, machine shop, and they can put new faces on them for you. But I'm just going to clean all the carbon off. Oh, and new valve guide seals too I got to get. So valve guide seals, valve cover gasket, exhaust gasket, intake gasket, and a head gasket. And then we'll fire it up. Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! We got the parts from our local John Deere dealer. Those are great guys over there. Mike and Roger. Hi, Mike and Roger! You can't see them, but they're waving back at the computer screen right now. So we have two sets of numbers. Here's the Kamasaki part number, and this is the John Deere part number. In case you get yours from Kamasaki, ProPartsDirect.net is where you can get them, or your local John Deere dealer. So there's a push rod number. Here's the exhaust gasket. There's the deer number with the M. And there's the Kamasaki number. Valve guide seals, same thing. Kamasaki number. John Deere number with the M. Intake manifold gaskets. There's the M. M I U. That's an I, not a one. Valve cover gasket. Kamasaki number. John Deere number. And a head gasket. Kamasaki. John Deere. So there's your part numbers. Save you a little time. I cleaned up the valves on the wire wheel. Cleaned up the head. Everything looks good. Again, this has got low hours. 177 hours on this motor. Would help if I put the valve in the right. So a thin layer of lapping compound on the face of the valve. And then you want to go back and forth. And then I, I usually do this. It helps spread the compound around. And you'll hear it and feel it change. Oh, I need a rack. And we got a good, good, nice ring around there. So again, you're going to want to clean that compound off real good. Because if we leave some on there, it'll lap that valve to death. And then we'll do the same to the other side. Next, I'm going to install the valve guide seals. And they just simply push on top. You just push them on top. Now we're going to install the valves, but first we're going to spray a little gel lube on it, which we sell in our online store. This is good stuff. It's sticky. Spray a little on there. Put the valve in. Now we'll put our springs on and our caps. Now we've got our spring tool on there and we got it collapsed. Now we're ready to put our keepers on. And if you notice, the keeper is tapered. You want the tapered spot down. Now you can put a little grease on there that'll act like glue and hold it for you because they're kind of tiny. You want to get that keeper 
that little ridge that's on that keeper, that little raised spot, you want to get that into this recessed part of the valve. That's where the keeper goes. So see that grease holds it in there for you. Now we can, whoop. Gotta be careful. Now we can start to loosen it. And there's your dinner. Now we'll do the same to the other side. So we cleaned off the old intake gasket. Now you gotta make sure you get all of it off the gasket material, the head and off the manifold. Now this gasket doesn't have any kind of adhesive on it. Some gasket manufacturers have a little sticker you peel off and you can stick it on there and it'll hold it in place for you. So since we haven't taken our manifold completely off, we're gonna wanna kinda stick this on there. So there's a couple things you can do. You can get some of that high-tech gasket sealer that I use, or you can use a couple drops of super glue or crazy glue, because you just want to hold it in place. So we'll use the crazy glue. I'll just put a couple of little dots. We don't have to cover the whole thing. And the gasket goes on there like this. And then we'll let that set a few seconds. So I was inspecting the head and where the push rods failed and bent, it kind of raised this up a little bit. So you always got to inspect all your parts like a lawnmower detective. So I want to file that little raised area down just to make sure it doesn't interfere with anything. A little radius on there with a file. And then I'll blow that all off and spray some carb spray or brake cleaner on there to get all them little particles out of there. I got the head gasket and it goes on here on those locating pins. And then I made sure that you clean all this real good. I used the Scotch Brite on there. Now we can install the head. Find those pins and there we go. And I'm going to take one of the manifold bolts and just get it started. Kind of hold it in place for me. Oh, oh, look who it is! It's Fluffy the Rat! Hey, Fluffy, how you doing? I thought Blade and Muffkin killed you. Oh, you're Fluffy's twin brother? What's your name? Fluffy? Okay. Well, you and your family and your kinfolk make me a lot of money. So go out there and make me some money. We got five head bolts. Three long ones, two short ones. So one of the short ones goes under here. The other short one goes here. And then the three long ones go here. So I'm just gonna run them in. I'm not gonna tighten them down just till they stop, and then we'll go and torque them. 34 foot-pounds, three, four foot-pounds, 34. So we got three like this and two here, so I'm gonna start here in the middle, and then I'm gonna go in a cross pattern. And then you want to go in little increments. Put a little tension on it. Just gradually tighten them down until you get to 34.
just do that. Just keep going around. You hear it click. And that way you know you got them all even. See, they, they turn a little bit each time until it clicks. That's why you got to keep going. So you get it on there and it just clicks each time. Then you know you're stopped. Okay, so let's go back now and tighten our four manifold bolts. Remember we loosened them on this side so we didn't have to take this whole thing off. So go, go ahead and get your 10 millimeter and go in and tighten them up. Now we're ready to reinstall our new push rods. What? Fluffy 2, you're back again? What are you waiting for me to finish this job so you can crawl in there and build another nest? Get out of here, go build a nest in somebody else's equipment and then make me some money. You're gonna wanna lubricate the ends of the push rods. And I already did that, again, with the gel lube, because it sticks on there good. Then you're gonna have to get a flashlight and shine it in there and make sure you get the push rod on the end of a lifter that's down there because right above this is a hole that goes back to the crankcase and if you don't get it in the right spot you're going to lose that push rod is going to fall inside the crankcase so this is our rocker arm mechanism remember i had to take it off to get at that head bolt so let's go over this a little bit so you can see how this works Inside here, this little spacer here, it's on an eccentric. And that's how we're going to set our valve clearance or backlash. Now if you notice on here, this hole is small, this hole is big. So this thing will only go in one way. It'll only go in like that. And the washer's got to be on the head of the bolt. See, it won't go this way. So when you put the rocker in, it's going to go in like this. This is our big opening on here. So this little thing, see how it's got these little lines on it? The little lines go up. So we'll stick this back in here. Got to get it in the rocker. I'm a rocker, baby, I'm a rocker. And if you notice, this bolt has got flats on it. So you're going to have to hold this with your finger to get slide in, see? And then when we turn this bolt, it's going to turn that cam, and we're going to be able to set our backlash. So I'm going to go ahead and take this part and bolt it back on. Now this will only go on one way. See how it's not to go over that pin? You know, you don't want to put it on like this. That's wrong. Put it like that. Now if you want to put Loctite on this bolt, that's up to you. And then we'll go ahead and tighten that down. So now we need to set our valve clearance. Now you gotta make sure these are loose, keep these loose. So we'll turn the motor over until we open one of the valves. It don't matter which one, until it's fully open. Four to six thousandths. So when you turn this, see? See when you turn this? See how it moves it? 
pretty slick, huh? Makes it easy. So there's our, we turned it, there's our four thousands. And then you just hold it there and then tighten the nut underneath. Pretty simple. Oh. Look at that. One time deal. Four thousands. Spin it over till the other valve's fully open. Same thing. See, you'll see it turn. That's a pretty pretty slick idea. I like that. That makes it easy. You ain't sitting there with that lock nut like on other ones, messing with that lock nut, and then you get it tightened down and then it, it moves a little bit and then you're loosening it back up. This one's a little trickier from the underneath, so I'm gonna use a socket. There we go, look at that. There's your dinner on that. Oh yeah, four thousands. Well, now we're gonna put the muffin on, and again, we're gonna do our little super glue trick because sometimes these gaskets, when you stick them up from underneath, gravity makes them want to fall down. So we'll just put a couple of drops of super glue on there. Now hold them in place. Now the old valve cover gasket was some kind of paper or fiber gasket. And the new one is this improved graphite gasket. And I didn't realize it was going to be like that. So I'm probably going to go back to Deer and buy me another one for the other side. But first we got to clean off the old gasket. Now before we reassemble, put the cover on and this, this shroud and that, we're going to test run it to make sure it's okay. You know, because maybe we missed something. So first thing I'm going to remember to do is take this off of here. We don't want that winging off when we start it. So let's go over here, crank her up. Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Muffkin, probably when they were running it with the two bent push rods, let it run about 10 or 15 minutes, that'll burn itself off. So, now you can go and put this back on. Remember to zip tie your wires back to it. Put the cover on, put the screen on. Put the muffkin cover back on. And put all the shrouding around the back. One last thing. The customer came in and said, well, how do I get at that to know if there's a, a fluffy nest in there or not? There should be some kind of access holes. And I said, you know, on crawlers, they do have some access panels on the top of the blower shroud on some of their model engines. So I said, well, I could add something. And he said, could you do that, Harold? I would like that. So I went and found these caps. I forgot, I got them on, from something, I save all this stuff. You can buy some caps like this, and I got me a two and a half inch hole saw, and I bored a hole in there. So now he's got some access. He can see if Fluffy built a nest in there, and if he did, he could blow it out or vacuum it out. There's your dinner on this Kamasaki with the valve guide that moved and how we fixed it so it won't come out. You need to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You need to follow me. Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store. Buy some Terrell apparel. Support Terrell. And as always, 
There's your dinner. This is crazy guy looming around, doesn't agree with folks scrapping parts. Thinks they're like people. So just keep a level head, all right? Oh, great, Ed. Is this even worth it for what scrap prices are at right now? Just give me a hand lifting this thing, all right? There he is, Len! Quick, drop the parts! It ain't worth it! You better run! Parts!